distracted minds. I think we can all relate to that one. And it's very easy to get lost in your thoughts and believe that there are times in your future which are much more important than this very present moment. Your mind might be wandering off to thinking about meeting up with someone, going on holiday, or getting home to the kids after a busy day at work, which is understandable, especially if your mind has a negative perception of what you're experiencing in the now. But believe me, this is a trap. Yes, of course, you've got exciting things, frightening things waiting for you in the future, depending on the story your mind is telling you. But believe me, the most important moment of your life will always be right now. Uh, Welcome, by the way, to the Mindset Change podcast, and I'm your coach and host, Paul Shepard. If you've not yet subscribed and you want to wake up and change your life this year, then please do subscribe as you really don't want to miss what is coming your way. Now, I love this quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, the author, the Buddhist monk, the teacher, who says, the present moment is the only moment available to us and is the door to all moments. Great reminder of the importance of the present moment. But yet, we can all drift off in a trance and squander our attention on a past or future which does not even exist. And it can feel addictive too. There's a buzz that we can get from our imaginations creating thoughts of joy and fear, which can feel much more exciting than what we are experiencing right now. But it can be a protective technique too. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed with your feelings, for example, or you're not enjoying something you're experiencing, your mind may have trained itself to go wandering off to the past or future because the present moment might feel a little boring or too difficult to deal with. And if we're constantly doing that, this will continue to train the mind to not fully engage with the here and now. And it can lead to a lot of anxiety and stress as the monkey mind, which is the name given to it by Buddhists because it reminds them of a monkey which is just jumping furiously from thought to thought and just not staying still, which of course makes it very difficult to have focus, clarity of thought and to feel calm and relaxed. And it's a very common affliction. And the cost of this is the connection to what is going on right now for you. And as Eckhart Tolle says in The Power of Now, you can miss your whole life which is never not now. And I hear quite a lot how people wish they could be more present with their families, their friends, whilst engaging in work or something else that they love. Their mind has been trained to jump around too much, making it much harder to fully appreciate what they have right now. And even when that so-called more important moment happens, their mind is already whispering, what's next? What's next? which then dilutes the experience they could have had if they had been fully present. And their minds have become fragmented and is now creating another new future important moment to focus on. And it reminds me of children at Christmas and there's a big pile of presents and they're handed a present and they excitedly rip it open, see the gift And then their eyes do this thing where suddenly they're chucking to one side the gift and they're already reaching for the next present to unwrap. I know how disheartening that can feel. You took a long time to choose that present and lovingly wrap it up and suddenly within seconds it's been discarded for the next exciting thing. And we're like that. I know people who can't stop thinking about going on holiday They really need to break. It's taken months. It's taken a long time to plan. It's cost a lot of money. And when they get there, instead of being able to fully embrace the experience, which happens in moments, they can't stop their minds wandering off to thinking about getting back home, work, and replaying all sorts of scenarios from their past and future predictions rather than being able to enjoy the present moment. I can imagine some of you are nodding your heads a little sheepishly at that. We've all been there, so there's no shame in that, but we can do better. 
But here's a frightening fact just to wake us up a little. And that's a good thing to remember. But 80%, yes, 80% of the average person's thoughts each day are apparently negative. And it gets a little worse because 95% of your thoughts each day are also repetitive. So unless you choose to wake up, be present and create new thoughts, which create new feelings, which create new behaviors, then you're just going to mostly repeat yesterday as if living the same Groundhog Day. And that, for me, I don't know about for you, that feels like that's not much of a life at all, is it? And just a reminder about thoughts themselves, they're not real. They are illusions of the mind. They are either useful or not. And learning to mentally filter out which ones you pay attention to will be a gift that keeps on giving. So if your monkey is jumping about from branch to branch, remind yourself that what it's jumping to, unless it's useful or not, is just an illusion, a fantasy usually about a future which doesn't even exist yet. But what can you do about it? And if any of you are listening to this going, oh, he's going to say mindfulness. Oh, I just can't be bothered with that. Oh, it's just too hard. Oh, I haven't got time anyway. Let me tell you, I hear that all the time. I've said those things to myself too. That is a trick of the mind, the monkey mind. But I tell you what is harder, much harder, And that is living a distracted half a life, living in regret of wasting so much time trapped in your imagination and away from the most important moment you will ever have. And that will always be right now. So yes, mindfulness training is hard. But then again, so is going to the gym. When you go to the gym, you don't do one sort of bicep curl and go, well, I can't see the results yet, so I'm going to give up. But it takes training. It takes consistency. It can take sweat. It's hard work for you to begin to notice the changes in your body at the gym. This is no different to training your mind. There'll be days when you do mindfulness training and you're like, oh, this is amazing. This is the best thing I've ever done. And there'll be other days when you're like, this is difficult. This is really hard. I don't get it. My mind's been wandering off all over the place. But just like working out, You're going to have good days and you're going to have days where you didn't feel like you worked out properly at all. But both types of experiences are really important for your growth. Don't let the mind trick you into thinking you shouldn't do something or can't do something which would actually enhance your way of living. So yes, train your mind with mindfulness to wake up out of that trance. Be more present to value and fully embrace the here and now much more often. Now, we can't do that all the time. Our minds do wander. And in some cases, if you're allowing your mind to wander, so I go for a walk at lunch times and I allow my mind to wander because that's when I get those wonderful creative moments. It comes up like bubbles from the bottom of my subconscious mind to the surface, hitting me with wonderful sources of inspiration and ideas. But I also enjoy bringing my attention fully to the present moment and experiencing the beauty, the wonder, the miraculous feeling of I'm alive, I'm experiencing this wonderful moment in the here and now. The boost on your neurochemistry just from being present and accepting and surrendering to where you are is phenomenal. Wonderful reducing stress, wonderful for reducing inflammation. So many health benefits. And being present is liberating in ways you might not be able to imagine just yet. But with some training, you can get glimpses of that freedom when your mind stays still in the here and now. So not only are you setting yourself free from the stories of your mind, and believe me, we have a lot of stories. We are so creative. But you are also getting to fully engage with the people and situations that matter the most to you. Now, that is priceless. And again, another gift that keeps on giving. If you have a moment, do this little exercise with me. Very simple. But I'd like you just to become aware of your breath. 
if you're walking, listening to this, or if you're sat down, whatever you're doing. Um, if you're driving, please be careful with this exercise. So again, connect with the breath. Just feel your belly rise and fall. And really feel the sensation of your stomach as you breathe slow and low in through the nose, out through the mouth, or out through the nose. And then just being aware of what's around you, widen your gaze. So you're taking in your full surroundings, almost like panoramic view, peripheral vision, just becoming aware of everything. And just notice that when you bring your attention fully to the present moment and to what you're experiencing, that your thoughts begin to disappear even if it's for a second or two. Just bringing your attention fully to the here and now and relaxing in this present moment. This is the most important moment of your life because it's the only moment that will ever happen for you. So fully engaging with it, whatever you choose to do, without judgment, without trying to distract yourself, but to fully engage when you can, when it's appropriate, liberates you from the stories of your mind. You might notice a sense of peace and stillness for a few seconds. The body may begin to relax a little, neck and shoulders beginning to drop, tension around the face, around the jaw to release, letting go. Could you just feel grateful for being alive, being in the position that you're in, the privilege to be hearing this podcast, however you're hearing it, and that right now, right here, You have everything you need. I get a sense of abundance. That anything that you do feel you need is a future story. Right this very second, whilst listening to my voice, you have everything you could ever want. And that's just a moment of mindfulness, very brief. And I'd advise you to go through my meditations because they all contain moments of mindfulness. I released this week a mindfulness meditation, so do look that up. And make it your mission to train your mind to be able to fully embrace the present moment. Don't live half a life because your mind is convincing you that training your mind to be present is going to be too hard. Yes, it's hard. but As I said, so is living half a life. Thanks for listening. If you would like to talk more with me about being awake, mindfulness, or anything mindset change related, then please feel free to join my WhatsApp community or Patreon Mindset Change Another Level channel. The links are in the show notes. Remember, stay awake, stay aware, and have the most incredible day. 